Good morning. Memorial Day is a day we gather together to remember and honor those who came before us. We have a proud history in Northbrook, Shermerville, and Northfield Township of men and women serving in our armed forces from the Civil War until today. Memorial Day 2020 is different from other years because there is no parade. There is no ceremony at the Village Green attended by thousands of Northbrook residents. This is the year of the global coronavirus pandemic and face masks, social distancing, and sheltering in place are the order of the day. There is so much uncertainty in our future, but I remind you all that as Americans, we have seen adversity before and overcome it. The United States of America was born in a revolution. We have overcome slavery, the Civil War, World War I, the 1918 flu pandemic, the Great Depression, World War II, the Korean War, Vietnam, 9-11, wars in Kuwait, Iraq, Afghanistan. As Americans together, we will endure and survive and return to normal. There is the hope and promise that a year from now, we will come together as a community for a Memorial Day parade that will honor those in the front line today, our first responders, the police, the firefighters, and EMTs, the nurses and doctors and other employees of Glenbrook Hospital, as well as other essential workers, such as baggers, checkers, stockers at the Sunset Foods, who allow us to continue our lives as close to normal as possible. Those of us in the American Legion understand and value the risk others are taking on our behalf, as today we remember and honor the memory of those men and women who have served our country in the military since 1776. I would like you to keep in mind one of my favorite quotes from an unknown source. Our flag, our flag does not fly because the wind moves it. It flies with the last breath of each soldier, marine, airman, and sailor who died protecting it. May God continue to bless the United States of America and the men and women who protect us against all enemies, visible and invisible. At this time, I would like to introduce our village president, Sandy Fromm, to say a few words. Sandy? Thank you, Tom. I'm here today in a different setting and in an, an unusual time to honor our service members and remember the sacrifices they have made for our country. In addition, I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge all those who have stepped up in the current battle against the coronavirus. We're here today to remember, to acknowledge, to honor all those who serve in whatever capacity, our soldiers, our sailors, our pilots, our police and fire officers, our nurses and doctors, all our essential workers. To remember their achievements, their courage, and their dedication, and to say thank you for all they have given to us. And we particularly remember those who gave the ultimate sacrifice for us and our country. The service members we honor today came from all walks of life, but they shared several fundamental qualities. They possessed courage, pride, determination, selflessness, dedication to duty, and integrity, all the qualities needed to serve a, car, a cause larger than oneself. Many of them didn't ask to leave their homes to fight. Many didn't even volunteer. They didn't go to battle because they loved the fight. 
They were called to be part of something bigger than themselves. They were ordinary people who responded in extraordinary times. They rose to the nation's call because they wanted to protect a nation which has given them, given us, so much. Since even before we were a country, American men and women have been answering the nation's call to duty. Millions of Americans have fought and died on battlefields here and abroad to defend our way of life. Today, those who serve continue to make the ultimate sacrifices. And even as we lose people, more Amer Americans step forward to say, I'm ready to serve. They follow in the footsteps of generations of Americans. Throughout the years, from the first official Memorial Day in 1887 to today, we've continued to honor those who serve. We have awarded medals to many, added their names to monuments and named buildings for them, honored them for their bravery, but nothing can ever replace the hole left behind by a person who has fallen in service. And no number of medals and ribbons can confront the ones left behind. Today, I'd like to recognize all those who serve in these unprecedented times. We come together to remember, to honor, and to pay gratitude to those who have made the ultimate sacrifice so that we can live in freedom. Not just today, but every day, let us say, we remember from the soldiers who served and starved through the winter at Valley Forge, to the doughboys crouched in the muddy trenches of France, to the platoon who patrolled the hazy jungles of Vietnam, to the young men and women patrolling the mountains of Afghanistan, to those who serve as we battle the virus, let us say we remember and honor you all. Let us never forget. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sandy. We will now present a speech written by Northbrook resident Tom Coogan. It will be delivered by Vice Commander Tom Kittler. Now, Coogan wrote this speech but isn't here because he is shel currently sheltering in place at an out-of-state location. A little bit about Tom Coogan. He grew up just a few miles from here. After school at New Trier and graduated from Colorado College, Tom was commissioned through Aviation Officer Candidate School and spent several years flying the Sea Sprite helicopter off Navy destroyers, predominantly in the, Asian, in the Persian Gulf. He was awarded two air medals, one for executing a rescue from a burning tanker while under attack, and another for a rescue in a typhoon. Almost 10 years later, Tom left the Navy. Tom and his wife, Katie, have lived in Northbrook for 27 years and are fortunate to have raised two sons here. At this point, I would like to invite Vice Commander Tom Kittler to come forward. Thank you, Commander. Thank you, Tom. And a uh, special thanks again to Tom Coogan. Again, these are his words, and I share them proudly. Today is Memorial Day, a, many, a, ma a day many think of as a holiday for summer kickoff parties, barbecues, and pool openings. These events are great examples of the privileges we normally take for granted. 
made possible by the real reason we set aside Memorial Day from the rest of the year. Following the Civil War, Decoration Day was born to remember fallen veterans by placing flowers on their graves. Soon the name was changed to Memorial Day, which became a federal holiday in 1888. The term holiday is probably a bit out of context when we consider the true meaning of this day. When American servicemen and women put themselves in harm's way to protect our country, they understand that they may lose their life in doing so. When they make this ultimate sacrifice, they not only lose the opportunity to live a life well-earned, but their families' lives are forever changed. A sacrifice has been made, unrealized future moments lost for so many. A pebble has been thrown into a pond and ripples emanate from that spot until they reach the shore. But things don't end there. Each ripple bounces from the shore in varying directions, sending small waves across the water only to repeat at the next shore. You may not be able to see all these interactions as our eyes can only pick up so much. That one pebble tossed into that pond has forever changed the surface of the water. When someone dies fighting for our country, that impact of their battle contribution and also their personal loss are like the waves from that pebble in the pond. The sacrifice made by a single World War I soldier continues to affect us today. As we recognize and honor the selfless, untiring performances of all healthcare workers, essential employees during this current COVID-19 pandemic, it brings to mind all the military medics, doctors, and nurses who sacrificed their lives while treating on the battlefield. There are always heroes among us just waiting for their chance to contribute to a never-ending struggle towards a greater good for our nation and for the rest of the world. Americans truly reside in the greatest country on earth. We live in a society surrounded by freedoms. I know that some people may think that within these hard social distancing times that their freedoms are imperiled. Let's instead focus on how we got here. Focus on the millions of patriots who gave their very lives to allow us to live freely, vote, make choices, and express views without fear of a government's retribution. We remember today those armed service members who have died in combat throughout our history to bring us the rights we have as American citizens. Millions of brave men and women have sacrificed their lives to bring us the rest, to bring the rest of us victory and freedom. And we pause today, not just to give them thanks, but to remember why we are grateful. I know when each of you wake up each day and face what we as a world, not just as a country are fighting for, you may want to feel sorry for yourself. Let me enlighten you that over the last 240 years, we have had people suffering and fighting far worse enemies than we now face. Many of those are from Northbrook. When you are able, please walk through the Village Green and find the Veterans Memorial along the East Side Walkway and read the names of the many brave Northbrook service members who died while protecting our country. A brief explanation of the Memorial Day flag tradition. Those with an adjustable flagpole should fly the covers at half mast until noon, or if in a ceremony after ceremonial taps to recognize, remember, and honor those who have died fighting for our country. After that period, we proudly raise our colors once again to full height for the living who make these sacrifices worthwhile. The best way to honor those who have died protecting us in a life well lived with integrity, national respect, service, and care for our fellow citizens. That is why we raise the flag again. This Memorial Day, as we continue to honor those who fell for us in battle, let's also pause to remember those who have sacrificed their lives while serving others. 
outside your homes, you can fly the U.S. flag today to show those around us that we remember. Thank you for watching. Your very presence today, even if it can't be in person, makes you someone who cares for our community, our country, and our history. May God continue to bless Northbrook, and may God bless these United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. At this point, we will partake in a ceremony, an annual ceremony that uh, is referred to as the Post Everlasting. All present will remain silent until the conclusion of this ceremony. The brazier has been placed and properly, properly arranged for our ceremony. This moment is sacred and with the most visible presence of those who have gone before. We wear our American Legion caps in remembrance of comrades' service to our country in all branches of service, Army, Air Force, Navy, Marines, and Coast Guard. Today we come to honor the memory of those who have offered their lives in the service of country and who have enrolled in that great spirit army whose footfalls cause no sound, but in memory of mankind, their souls go marching on, sustained by the pride of service in the time of war. Because of them, our lives are free. Because of them, our nation lives. Because of them, the world is blessed. May this service deepen our reverence for our departed comrades. Legion members, please uncover. O oh God of all our yesterdays, our todays, and our tomorrows, we pause together in the quietness of remembrance to linger in thought over our comrades whose names have rung out in our hearing as one who's transferred from our ranks to post everlasting. Short months ago, they stood before us. We laughed with them and labored and lived out a portion of our lives in common cause. They contributed in some fashion, large or small, to what we are when we were in their midst. We have not been untouched by what they did and who they were. In such moments as this, we are keenly aware of your everlasting presence and as our own, only remaining link with our former comrades. We salute you and commend them to you with trust and expectation. Whatever battle stars or ribbons they may have deservedly won, perhaps unknown to us, on the battlefields of life, you will award. May they stand before you now as before a beloved captain in eager readiness for whatever is to come. Amen. Please recover. Shortly, we will Put the flag at half staff and sound taps in memory of the comrades of the post everlasting of American Legion Post 791. The following members of George W. Benjamin Post 791 have transferred to the post everlasting in the last year. Past Commander Thomas Dworzak, Harold Hal Dots, Jerry March. Michael J. Moran, David Nell. From the Auxiliary, Rose Sagona.
Adjutant, will you please lower the flag to half staff? Thank you. <laughs> Gentlemen, you are dismissed.